Wait, what do you guys think? Do you think that what he just read and just what he just put a massive arrow to and what this study actually says, do, 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 these, do these things link up? What, what do you all think? He said, a meta, a, we love meta-analysis. It's so good. It's, it's not what the study says at all. He literally just lied. Why are these people so dumb? You ever think about that? Especially when it comes to conservatives. I know a lot of people have been kind of thinking that what's wrong with them? What's going on with them? Why do they think like this? What is wrong with these people, bro? It's a thought that goes through my mind a lot. And you may even hear me say it a decent amount if you watch some of our content. But I would like to actually put some thoughts together about why I think these things are happening and why conservatives act the way that they do in this country. And also like abroad as well. But this is going to be specifically for the U.S. and our Republican Party and conservatives uh, that we have to deal with on a day to day basis. Right. I was just thinking that. Well, I'm glad because I have this video right here for you that is being made at this very moment. All right. Alternative facts, common sense, just asking questions, facts over feelings and anti-intellectualism, all of these things are big in the conservative space. They love these things. You probably heard them parrot them time and time and time again. It's what they basically built a brand off of ever since they moved away from talking about actual policy to culture war cringe, which is what we're dealing with these days, right? That has helped radicalize a lot of conservatives to be even worse than they already were, right? A lot of people didn't think they could get worse every single day. You are proven wrong. But I want to talk about this a little bit, okay? Because this goes back to just like the fundamentals of what uh, the fundamentals of like liberalism and conservatism. But I want to talk specifically about like conservatism. But there's like an old saying it basically goes, the left falls in love, the right falls in line. And it's pretty apparent when you see things like, let's say Donald Trump, okay? Strong man comes in, big man come in. He, he shakes things up, he gets a lot of people on his side. And then you have a bunch of other people just kind of feeding off of that and they get in line and they're perfectly happy getting in line. Conservatives love to get in line, know their place. They love hierarchies. It's a big part of their political philosophy and what they care about, like the um, like structure and hierarchy and knowing your place. These things are core fundamentals of conservative ideology that allows them to be the way that they are. And not everybody is immune to it. And we can all fall into those pitfalls because a lot of them are very knee jerky and a lot of them are very sort of, um, you know, first impression type thing. Right. It's baked into everybody. Everybody has the capacity, I believe, to be left or right or whatever. And so we experience these things like that. This is why just naturally when we're together, you have less racism when you have like a bunch of diverse people together. You don't have to be some special breed of person to feel that. Same way is that when trouble hits, when trouble strikes a nation or people, they tend to become more conservative, right? You've seen this before. You've probably seen this before. Even some people that you may know that are genuinely pretty lefty, once the rubber meets the road and once like there's some hardship, people are like conservative time, you know, they bundle together. They form groups and you're less likely to take risks. You're less likely to be caring for people who are different than you. You're less likely uh, to be as open and you're more likely to, to fall into conservative values and go back into that hierarchy and look for structure to help kind of fix that problem, right? You can see this when it comes to the country, right? So let's say Bush, all right? Rem rem remember Bush? I think second Bush during like 9-11, but pre 9-11, Bush w was not a very liked president, like not much at all. Post 9-11, it went from like 45% of the country, like 45% uh, approval rating to 60%. Jumps just like that. Trouble hit. There's one guy in charge. We get behind him. And then instantly it goes from open to talk about things and more debate to I can't believe you would say that. And do you hate the country? And all of these sort of like, not 60, more like 90. As far as I remember, wait, which was a, which, which was the second Bush? Who, who the fuck was the second Bush? Is it just W Bush? Normie W? Okay. Yeah, you're right. My bad. It jumped from 51% to 90%. 51 to 90%. Guy was a complete utter goofball. Had no clue what he was doing. And then 90% of the country was just like, yeah, he's, he's a, he's the best guy. 
He's he's the best. He just started dropping bombs, and we're just like, oh yeah, he's the best guy, right? This meme is very real. Yeah, that's all you need. Just start dropping bombs, and he's instantly the best guy. But you see this a lot more when it comes to conservatives, and you see that they're able to leverage that, especially when it comes to these days. You, you know how when it comes to conservatives, it's it's a sort of like boom bust cycle of tragedy over tra or like um massive thing after massive thing after massive thing after massive thing, especially when it comes to like the culture war thing. Remember how every single day with Trump, it was like a new catastrophe that was happening. The sky is falling every single day over something new to keep you just like hooked on it. That's what he was. That's what they're doing. And that's what they've taken from that. When was the last time you heard a conservative talk about critical race theory? When was the last time you heard, a, you know, what, what, what I, I they, they just completely forgot about it. It's just completely gone. They only talk about when like election security, when elections are coming up. When was the last time you heard them talk about the caravan? When, when was that? It's just gone. They don't care about it anymore because it never really meant that much. What it meant, all it meant to them was the ability to rally people together to be able to have something be together. Yeah, how they removed Mr. Potato Head's non-existent penis. Remember? Remember how they were how the sky was falling and every in every day it was like they took away Mr. Potato Head's non-existent penis. They uh removed the Native American girl off of the butter, right? They removed the like made black lady from the maple syrup. They they removed the guy from the uh, uh from the rice, right? Dr. Seuss books. Remember that? Remember how there was like an Asian depiction of Dr. Seuss? And that was just God. It's just and it's just one after the other after the other after the other. Yeah, they took away they 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 took away the green M&M's fuckable feet. It's it's just every single day with these people. There's something new and they're not done. Then they were complaining about then they're now com they're complaining about trans people. And now then they can com uh, complain a lot about I don't know, what's next? What's next on the horizon? Who knows? It is the culture, constant culture word. That's what they want. They fall in line and they can use that to their advantage. They can use that because now they don't have to try to lie to people about their politics because they don't have any politics. It's just like the left is wacky and wild. And that's the only thing that they really care about is the culture war. Now, some conservatives or some people may point out and they'd be like, hey, shark, you, you say the left doesn't fall in line. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about like uh, the USSR? Well, let's talk about authoritarianism in the left, okay? We can talk about this for a little bit because I, I have a response for this. Do not worry. I do, actually. When these groups come together and, um, and, and there are lots of problems and you can rally together and get people together, you still feed off of that conservative drive that's, that, that can be hidden in some people. OK, and think about these people. Think about like a Stalin or like any other supposed communist or like left wing sort of authoritarian that came to power. Was their end goal that sort of like state capitalist state that they had? No, actually, that wasn't their end goal. They took the power and then they made an authoritarian state, but then they pinky promised that they were going to give the people the power back once everything's perfectly in place and then we're going to be fine. Just, we got to get over this bump and then everything will be great. And you see a lot of like some lefties still say that these days, a lot more like tanky sort of lefties or whatever. They'll go, oh, listen, all we need to do is give this person literally all of the power, then they'll fix everything, and then after that, the ground will be laid for us to, you know, the ground will be laid for us to, you know, then give the power back, and then they give the power, then the 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 state that has all of the power will just give the power back to the people, and then we'll have our, our great meme. It doesn't work out, because surprise, surprise, when you give people power, they kind of don't want to give it back, you know? They kind of don't want to give it up, all right? Yeah, it's an easy solution, easy solution, right? But it's different because that wasn't the end goal. When it comes to right wing authoritarianism, that give like group of people that all of that power, that is the end goal. That is the end goal. Right. Like, think about it. When these people were rioting at the Capitol and trying to install Donald Trump as like the forever God Emperor of the United States, bro. What's happening? OK, you cannot sit here and tell me that you care about freedom or whatever when you're trying to basically install some guy as a king because you lost an election. They want all the power to be shifted over there because he was owning the libs and he was doing what they want. That freedom is not their real end goal. It's absolutely not. And that's why their definitions of freedom, when they talk about things like gay people having the right to marry 
and being able to oppress people, their idea, conservative idea of freedom is not let people do what they want as long as you're not infringing on the rights of others. It's they don't take freedom from the perspective of let's have as many as possible until it starts to cause like a massive societal issue and then we have to curtail them so we have as much freedom as possible. They take the opposite position. How many people can I oppress as possible until it starts to go a little overboard? Okay. So it's like, oh, sure, you can have like the right to marry, I guess. But all of us should be able to say, um, but everybody should be able to say that they're not going to be able to marry you. Okay. So you should, it should be theoretically possible that you should not be able to actually access this right because we could all just come together and say, we are not going to give it to you. That's the type of freedom that they think that they would like to, that they know that they want to live with, but they'll always hide it in the guise of genuine freedom without going any deeper than that. Because if they did, then it's going to be like, ah, no, then they're going to have to come to grips with the fact that it's not real freedom of being, you know, being able to do what you want. It's real freedom of being able to oppress whoever you want before it becomes too much of an issue for them to politically keep a hold of. Right. And a big thing that a lot of conservatives stick on, which I think is why they to just us and just like kind of your normie person, they seem just kind of stupid is common sense. Now, have you ever heard a conservative talk about common sense chat? What do you what do you all think? And if you've and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can tippity type it down in the comment section. It also helps us in the algorithm. But like you've you've heard a conservative talk about common sense, right? All the time. Yeah, constantly. They love the common sense bit. It's very good to them how they come to they have a opinion, right? Yeah. Un, yeah. Unhinged spewing an unhinged conspiracy theory. Then they say it's common sense right? Conservatives love to stick on to common sense because they can feed off of people who are uneducated, people who don't understand the topic, and people who have a knee-jerk reaction. It is the politics of a literal knee-jerk reaction to something. That's what they consider common sense. Common sense makes no sense because a lot of the time, what common sense is to somebody is their first initial reaction to something and how they genuine and how they genuinely feel, even if it's uneducated. That can be common sense. Now, back in the day, the earth revolved around the entire universe instead of us being in a solar system. That was common sense, right? I took microbiology, okay? Back in the day, we used to think that sperm was just a really tiny person that was in the head of the sperm that was just like swimming up the cooter, okay? That was common sense. Owning human beings was common sense. Women being property was common sense. Them not being able to vote was common sense, all right? People of different races not being able to interact with each other was common sense. I took, like, back, back to the microbiology thing. I took microbiology back in the day before we knew about like germ theory and flies really. And like the, the life cycle and rats and bugs, people thought that if you just left out food, that creatures would just start spawning from it. Not like flies laid eggs in the edge, eggs hatched into maggots and the maggots started eating. And then you found the maggots. No, they were just like, poof, there, just bugs. And that was common sense. OK, it was common sense that why you are sick or why you are poor is because you are just a bad person and the universe is punishing you. That was common sense. That's ridiculous. All of this that I've mentioned is ridiculous, but all of it at some point in time was simply common sense that a lot of people would just say, oh, of course, of course. Why? Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it be? It's ridiculous. The core of common sense is thinking that. Whatever you initially feel is correct by definition. It's the exact opposite of facts over feelings. It's literally feelings over facts. We've talked about this before. Does anybody remember like John Doyle and uh, Hunter Avalon's debate where Doyle just kind of like called in and he started like doing manic rambling until like Hunter was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Doyle was like, oh, all you do is listen to the lab coats and you listen to these people. You can't think for yourself. You can't like put together and make up thoughts for yourself, right? He was literally rejecting actual education 
for his own personal subjective reading of the situation, calling it common sense and saying that because it just agrees with me, that's that's what must be true because I already agree with it. It's backwards reasoning. It's the inverse of logic. It's motivated reasoning is what it really is. It's rationalization. It's rationalizing what you already feel by doing the exact inverse of a logical process of trying to figure out what's real because you don't want to have to deal with the fact that you could be wrong. And so why would you ever start from a position that doesn't already presuppose that you are correct? If you start from how you already feel and then work backwards and then create things that already agree with you, then you'll never be wrong because you'll always have some sort of comeback to fall back on because, listen, you did the research. You did your own research. You didn't do their research. You used motivated reasoning and you used um, confirmation bias to figure out things that agree with you. You weren't looking for things that could actually disprove your point. You were looking for the exact opposite. You were looking for things that will prove your point. And just because, and even if you can't find them, you're still going to be there because it doesn't matter. They don't like education. They genuinely think education is a detriment to, to, what, you, to what you are and who you are. Right. They genuinely believe that education and becoming intelligent is bad. Well, also, at the same time, when it's convenient for them, then talk about like the science, especially when it comes to trans people. That's a big thing. We'll touch on that in, in a little bit. We'll touch on that later. Right. Because this is this has been very big. I mean, it's still facts don't care about your feelings. It's still Ben Shapiro's wacky calling card. That's his that's his big thing. Ah oh, man. Look at him. Look at him go. That's crazy. Also, apparently they're being um, silenced, but uh, 500,000 likes. OK, but listen, I'm being silenced. 500,000 likes. I'm being silenced. Anyways, the thing is, feelings are facts. Literally, they are facts. It, it is a fact that you could feel a certain way. That's right. There's a little bit more nuance here. When your ideology is more than a bumper sticker, then we can start to have like a little bit of nuance to what this really means. Right. My ideology is more than simply facts don't care about your feelings if you can fit all of your political talking points onto like a bumper sticker you're probably doing something wrong if i'm going to be honest with you like it's good branding it's good marketing but you got to have something a little bit more tangible than being able to have like a quick a quippy comeback during um a debate before you run away from continuing to have like an actual conversation but i will say it's great for shorts and it's great for bites uh, it's great. It's great for sound bites, and it's great for being able to talk amongst yourselves about why how uh, epically based you actually uh, actually are without having to do any more work on top of it. You know what I mean? Even though like it, a feeling is a fact, it, it's not like the entire situation, right? Like you can feel a certain way, and we can understand that, but that doesn't mean that it's correct, right? It's valid for you to have a feeling. It's not valid for us to take that feeling and then do some other things with it, right? Like segregation. I mean, you can feel scared about segregation. That doesn't mean that simply because some people feel scared about it does not mean means that we should just go along with it. I mean, look at how some insane women try to make um like trans people existing into like a, a woman's rights issue. Right. They're like, oh, my gosh, we, we no longer have real women's spaces. Women's spaces are being completely overrun They're Oh, oh my God, what's happening? We wouldn't accept this. We wouldn't accept this argument. For like, well, I, I, won't, I don't want to say we, because a lot of conservatives would accept that argument, and they are today. But we, normal human beings, wouldn't accept this argument if it's like about any, literally anything else. It, it doesn't make any sense. And listen, 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 listen. Saying things like lab coats, talking about how like college is so bad and wrong for you, it's, it's because at the end of the day, as sad as it is, and a lot of people don't want to like, you know, think about it, <laughs> reality kind of has a left-wing bias. Every single time these things happen, if they were able to actually back up their points, a lot of their points on like scientific with scientific reasoning, then they'd be like shaking the papers like 24 seven. They'd be like bashing people up upside the head with them, but they can't because they don't and they're not real. Conservative common sense is a ideological plague on you. It rots your mind. All right, because you don't have anything to back up your point. So you have to go, well, remember when you felt that one way about it? And well, that's actually true because you felt it. And that's right. Right. I mean, just take a look at how um, Matt Walsh dealt with like trans people in his uh, wacky, shitty movie um, attempt at a movie. Uh, what is a woman? Right. 
He went to he went to researcher after doctor after psychologist after psychiatrist that all disagreed with him. And you know what his like big comeback was? You know what it was? Flying to Africa and then go walking around with a African tribe that practices female genital mutilation and go, look, even these backwoods fucking Africans agree with me. Look at them. Look at these people. It, if they agree, if they can get, if these people can, if these pe- can understand it, why can't we in the West, right? And that was like his big thing. That, that, was, the, that was the big thing. He flew across the world for that singular point. It was that one point. That's it. Like, hey, if, they, if, if, if fucking these people can do it, if these people agree with me, what the hell's going on with us? It's, it, it makes literally no sense. I would, we would never go to like some forest tribe and then be like, yo, dog, the heliocentric model? Cringe. Am I right? That makes no sense. It never made any sense. You would think you would think that um, Matt Walsh gives a shit what like the like African tribes have to say about how we run our country in any real meaningful way. What other reason would he be going to that country? He spelled it out in his movie that he is like, well, look at these fucking primitive creatures. Even they can agree with me. And so if that's the case, then what's going on within our in my country? That was his entire point. He literally leaves a college after he's completely skips through what a what a college professor has to say about gender, flies to Africa and goes, look at this. Even these people get it. Education is actually their downfall. OK, I mean, take and they they can't understand studies. They don't get them and they don't want to ever get them because they always disagree with them. And when they try to use studies, it always falls apart for them. I want you to take a look at this. This is conservatives entire like mental capacity used on attempting to use actual science and research to back up any of their points. Just take a look at this really quick. It's just so incredibly interesting. This is from the John. This is him trying to cover the John Stewart uh, segment where he bodied that um Arkansas AG. There's not a whole lot of it, but the research that we do have suggests that not only is there no evidence that this stuff reduces the rate of kids harming themselves, right? Um, actually, when people undergo transitioning, what happens is that they still harm themselves at higher rates than the rest of the population. Right. In some cases, we have meta analysis showing that they harm themselves at higher rates post operation than they did. So this is him trying to literally do anything to come up with any sort of information that could back up his point at all. This is just incredibly interesting to me. There are also meta analysis of summaries of studies such as Adams Hitomi and Moody from 2017, which show that lifetime risk of suicide for transsexuals is higher than reported before gender correction. Many studies report decreased psychiatric illness several years after treatment. So you may be wondering, man, that's crazy. Shark, I wonder if you have that study. I do. It's right here. It's right here. Adams, Hitomi, and Moody from 2017. Okay. If we could just scroll down really quick. Just Let's just take a look at this. Address transgender suicidality vis-a-vis the impact of gender confirmation surgery, finding that persistently held notion that transgender individuals experience higher rates of suicidality after undergoing a gender confirmation surgery to be unfounded. Indeed, suicidality has been recorded to be most common when requests for surgery are refused. So does that sound like what he just said? What, what do you guys think? Do you think that what he just read and just what he just put a massive arrow to and what this study actually says, do, 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 these, do these things link up? What, what do you all think? He said, a meta, a, we love meta-analysis. It's so good. It's, it's not what the study says at all. He literally just lied to these people's faces. And honestly, a lot of conservatives are just like based. I love, I love lying. I love lying. It, it's, it's great. It makes me very happy. I, 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 I love lying. I eat it up every single day. I eat it up every single day. If these people actually had research to back up their points, especially on trans people, don't you think we'd see it? Don't you think we'd see it literally every single day? What do you guys think? 
Don't you think they'd be posting it 24 seven? Don't you think if they had actual research from like well-established and also respected members of the medical community, don't you think they'd be talking about it all of the time? Where is it? Well, I want to see it. I want to see it because all I see are things like this. 98% of trans adolescents who started uh, puberty blockers went to continue gender affirming treatment after follow up, according to a new study from the Netherlands. Now, remember when they said that actually, oh, these people actually completely fall out of uh, transitioning. And so we shouldn't give them any uh, drugs because 99% of them are never going to be trans in the first place. So what happened here? What happened? You know, you want to see what conservatives responses are? to this of course they do that's their goal turns out exploiting psychologically vulnerable youth and their desperate parents is quite lucrative fascinating what percent of them have stunted development and end up with skeletal issues 30 to 50 percent let's talk about that now now what they're saying now what they're saying is that gender affirming care it went from gender affirming care is bad because once they turn like 20 they'll poof instantly not want to be trans but now it's changed from that to gender affirming care is bad because estrogen and testosterone are gateway drugs they're gate they're gateway drugs now oh you're you're in the pipeline oh you took testosterone well i guess it's time to get your double mastectomy like what are you talking about yeah, their goalpost is fucking cartoonish. It has legs and arms and it's sprinting away the second we get anywhere close to it. Oh, yeah, it used to be. It used to be. It's really bad because they they don't want to be trans. Now it's of course they're all trans because it's a gateway drug. And uh, the second you give anybody any sort of like gender memes, then they're going to instantly become a uh, transgender or something. Which one is it? Which one is it? I want to know. Please tell me. It never makes any sense because it doesn't need to make any sense because they don't care about they don't care about studies. They don't care about logic. They don't care real. about any of these things. And like the biggest nail in the coffin for this, if you're still if you still think that I'm being a little yeah, I'm I'm being a little harsh on them. OK, let's talk about James Lindsay. All right. Let's talk about James Lindsay really quick. The controversy around hoax studies in critical theory explained grievance studies now let's talk about we've talked about this on stream before but i know we have some people who haven't heard about the grievance studies let's talk about the grievance studies really quick the grievance studies if you don't know are was a meme study that lindsey graham and a couple of other people put together to try to prove that academia and the scientific community all hate um, conservatives and all will just completely accept anything a left winger ever says about anything at any point in time because uh, they hate they hate the cons and the reason why um, uh, studies come out to not agree with their political philosophy is not because they are incorrect but because but because the the scientists hate them it is probably the world's largest cope I've seen in my entire life. He spent years of his life and thousands of dollars on a cope mission to, pro to prove why the reason nobody takes him seriously is not because he's stupid, but because they don't, they just don't like him. It is very dumb. Now, what the grievance studies was based on, it was based on the idea. And if you didn't know what he did, I'm going to explain it for you now. What he and his team did is they made up studies they faked studies they were like um oh research has proved that being fat actually makes makes you way hotter and gives you more cummies and also everyone wants to have sex with you and it makes me very pog uh and you're also 10 10 trillion times healthier than uh, a skinny person is and then they made a study that's like pedophilia is is actually and then you know i'm, I'm not finishing that but you know they they were like they're like abusing kids is actually gigapog and that was like one of their um pieces of media and then they and then and then they made us and then they faked the study and it was like um actually the being left wing gives you a, a dick size of uh, a minimum 19 inches wow <laughs> and they they made a bunch of studies like that well, that's true yeah that part that part's true that part's true they made a bunch of studies like that and then they shoo, sent them out to scientific journals to be peer-reviewed right to all be peer-reviewed 
And some of them passed for peer review. Most of them didn't. And then after they got caught, because all of the studies were fucking ridiculous, they got caught and then they were like, um, uh, you got me, but you didn't get me. I got you because we, you, it was, it was proven that you all are cringe. Got them because some got accepted and they think the whole grievance study, like meme was based off of the idea, based off the assumption that peer review is made to figure out what is correct and what is incorrect. Now, why do I think this is stupid? And why does everybody think anybody with like more than three brain cells know that this is wildly stupid? Chat, this in science, how do we figure out what's right and what's wrong? When, when it comes to like making studies and when it comes to like coming to scientific consensus, how do we figure out what's right and what's wrong? Is it peer review? Is that, is that what it is? After you submit a study and it gets peer reviewed and it gets published, is that, is that what's right? Every single study that's published is a correct study. Is that what, is that what that is? Replication, repetition. You're right. You're right. It's repetition. Now, did James Lindsay and crew, did they test and disprove that the scientific journals have poor scientific method? Did they do that? Did they test the, the, the journal scientific method at all? No. Peer review doesn't tell you what studies are right and not right. That's not peer review's job. All it does is check your methodology. That's it. You can still fail peer review, but the study could be right. And you could pass peer review and the study could be wrong. It's not peer review's job to figure out what's right and what's wrong. These people have no clue what they're talking about. But then this went viral. Once, once this came out, the, the stupid machine for conservatives ate it up. It went viral because none of them have any clue how any of this works. They want to be victims. They're all professional victims. That gets us to our next, that gets us to our next topic. They're all professional victims. How do you think so many were able to fall into QAnon and anti-vax ideas? Because it's incredibly alluring to feel like you're the guy who has all of the information. Everybody else is a sheeple and, 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 and nobody else knows the truth but you. And they all deny it. It's, it's very alluring to feel like you're the only smart one in a room full of idiots. The only problem is they're always the stupid one. They're always the dumbass, right? The whole do your own research crowd is funny because it wraps all the way back into what we talked about a moment ago that was um the motivated reasoning and confirmation bias and having poor judgment skills right and this is proven i'm not the only i don't i don't just believe this okay it's not something that i just believe it's true that conservatives who say common sense is their primary source of guidance on what's right and wrong conservatives are more likely to say that common sense is what guides them between what's right and wrong oh of course of course of course that makes perfect sense. And it makes, it makes perfect sense. Does it? Does it really? And that's why it's so hard to reach a lot of these people because they believe that they're smart. That's the most dangerous thing is that they believe like somebody that, somebody that, uh, that knows that they know nothing is way easier to talk to than somebody who believes that they know everything. It's very hard to get through to that person because they think that everybody else is already incorrect. They've already come out with all of their positions and they've already rationalized them through their own lens right? Uh, but back on like the professional victim train, conservatives are professional victims. I think, especially here in the States, that being a professional victim is a prerequisite for you to be like an outspoken conservative. If I'm going to be honest with you, that is the biggest thing that you must do. You must be a victim. They love victim complexes. It's their favorite thing in the world. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you are a victim and everybody is coming out against you and everybody hates you for no good reason. OK, I specifically remember talking uh, when I went to the Better Discourse Conference that was in Texas when I flew to Texas and the conservatives on stage were like sucking their own dicks and talking about how everybody dislikes them and no and everybody is so mean to them uh, and they didn't do anything wrong. But people think that they're like bad or something. And uh, I can't believe that they think this. We, we, we don't deserve any of this. We're just great people. And they just come after us for no reason. And I remember I asked, I was like, how, how in the world can you sit here and say that you don't deserve any ire? You really did. You really feel like you did. You've done nothing as, as a group. Conservatives have done literally nothing to be disliked in the country. Nothing really, really. 
And I asked that question. I was like, for everything that conservatives have done from like fucking 1965 to today, you believe that they've done nothing wrong? Nothing. And then they stood up on stage and they looked me directly in the eye and they said, yes, we've done nothing wrong. Nothing that we've pushed for, nothing that we've done makes us deserving of any sort of dislike at all. And this is the type of person who we have to talk to. That's how you can figure out like an insane person between uh, the difference between the insane person and a rational person. There is no rational person who will tell you that there is not a single valid reason for you to dislike them. Not one, not one. Only stupid people believe that because they're in their own head. They can't possibly imagine thinking of themselves outside of their own personal bubble. They don't like themselves. So why would you not? Why, why would you dislike them too? It makes no sense, right? And so because of that, they have to believe that the only reason why anybody would be against them is because they simply just hate them. And they, and they have no reason to ever feel like they've done anything wrong. It makes literally no sense. Now, let's talk about it. What's the what's the biggest victim complex thing you hear from conservatives 24 seven? They're not allowed to speak. They're silenced every single day. They're silenced. They're not able to speak. The straight white male is the most oppressed boy in the entire country. You can't possibly. How can what are they supposed to do? There's nowhere for them to go. They're literally the most oppressed underclass in the entire country, bro. What's that? Yeah. Why can't I say the N word? I've been silenced. Oh, was it for your views on like low taxes? No. Oh, was it for your views on? <laughs> huh? What was that it? What was it on your views about the size of the government? Ah, uh, nah. Oh, what what uh, what was it about? Ah, uh, you know the views. Ah, uh, you know the ones. You know the ones. You you know the ones. Come on. It's those those views. You know. Oh, you know, that's those views I got censored for. You know how it is. What did you say? What did you say? Use of the N-word on Twitter jumped by almost 500% after must take over as trolls test the limit of free speech. What did you say? Is this, is, this, is this what they've been holding in for this entire time? It's curious, is it not? It's interesting. It's wild. Now, this makes no sense. It's just verifiably, provably makes no sense. Conservatives have the biggest platforms on every social media and every network, period. And every, and every like medium of communicating your thought, period, period. Except for maybe colleges, but more conservatives do college tours than uh, left-wingers do. So I'm not even sure if I would give that to them, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Because look, Facebook, what are the biggest accounts? Conservative accounts. Twitter, what's the biggest accounts? conservative accounts. YouTube, what's the biggest accounts? Conservative accounts. TV, like just cable news. What's the biggest, what's the biggest network? Do you know? And anybody know what the biggest conservative network is? It is sorry, what the biggest network is, period? Not conservative network, the biggest network, period. It's Fox News. If I remember correctly, Fox News is bigger than MSNBC and ABC combined. I'm pretty sure like Fox News may be even bigger than MSNBC and real. CNN combined. It is massive. It's huge. It's absolutely remarkable. There's only one notable conservative network to liberal two or three-ish. You can't say that you're silenced if you all pack up into one little space. There are conservatives who are on, there are conservatives who are commentators on, there's a conservative who literally runs a show on MSNBC. There's like Morning Joe. Joe was literally a conservative. Joe was literally a Republican. And he's still a conservative Democrat. Like, where's, where's, where's your liberal talking head on Fox News? It's not anybody else's fault that they just decide to move where nobody else wants to, where they can't reach anybody else. Let's be honest with ourselves. And this too, take a look at this. And for, for more proof of what I'm saying, this is Pew Research. Ideological echo chambers, okay? It's important to me to live in a place where most people share my political views. You see this? Consistently conservative, 50%. 50% of conservatives say that it's important to live where most of the people agree with me. They are literally a party that's built upon echo chambers. The reason why Fox News is the way that it is is because every single like conservative talking head wants to be on Fox News. 
They want to bunch together. They don't want to have to worry about dealing with people who disagree with them. I know even some people here may think that this would have been inverse, that people who are consistently liberal would be more likely to live like bunched up together. It's not true. There are far more splits in left wing and left wing and liberal ideology than there is when it comes to conservative ideology. They remember they fall in line. Why would they not be falling in line when it comes to this? There are only a few things that really tear them apart, and it seems like love for Donald Trump is one of them. But it's nowhere near as big as people think that it is. A lot, but no, it's nowhere near as big as people think it is when it comes to like the left uh, wanting to live only with people who agree with them. It's it's not it's not like that. Even here, remember how conservatives go, I can't, I can't believe people on the left don't want to be friends with people who disagree with them. Most of my close friends share my political views. Consistently conservative. Once again, topping the charts. Once again, topping the charts. Being the most people who are more likely to be, uh, to want to have an echo, an echo chamber or whatever of literally where you live and literally who your friends are. It's, it's wild, is it not? It's actually truly remarkable how they've been able to consistently flip the narrative and say everything that they actually believe and then put it onto the left. It's wild. That's why we're here, to dissect some of this, okay? It's all projection. It's all these people are. It's all projection, okay? Th these people turn Twitter bans into breaking news, right? They turn profile bans into national news. And you're supposed to make me believe that these people actually mean anything serious? That these people have actual political beliefs? Let's be honest with ourselves, okay? These people play professional victims. And the reason why, the big reason why, is so they can garner sympathy from people who disagree with them. One of those people is Elon Musk. Look at this. Remember. I don't know what Elon Musk's complete like political ideology is. I know for a fact he'd be somebody who's like, oh, I got some left wing views. I got some right wing views, you know, whatever. I don't care. What I do care about is how he's bought hook, line and sinker into the lie that conservatives are somehow completely disenfranchised, even though they have most of the power on almost every single platform, and especially when it comes to campaign finance and when it comes to rich people. Rich people are far more conservative than they are liberal. This is a fact of reality. There's a reason why the people who donated to Trump's campaign were orders of magnitude richer than the people who donated to Biden's campaign. This is not something new. And this is a, look, look it's an incredible meme from Sora. Sora posts good memes. She do, she do right? We want to kill trans people. We want civil rights. And Elon Musk in the middle, for Twitter to uh, deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral, which effectively means upsetting the far right and the far left. Incredible. Incredible memes. And the thing is, I'm not even sure how far away, like, we want to kill trans people is from, like, what, what a lot of conservatives are pushing for. Let's be honest with ourselves, okay? It's, it may not be they actively want to murder them, but they're perfectly fine with their deaths. That's for sure. That's non-debatable. We know this for a fact. They just don't care. It, it doesn't mean anything to them. And honestly, it may be the same when it comes to a lot of like establishment Republicans who are, who are talking about this honestly. Like They may also be people who just may not necessarily care that much about trans people or may not care that much about like the culture war, but what they do care about is getting votes. And what they do care about is not having to worry about lie after lie after lie and keeping everything straight when it comes to um, uh, doing whatever they want and giving uh, throwbacks to the people who um, to the rich people who gave to their campaigns while enriching themselves, while stealing their constituents um, futures and children's futures. So even though they may not hate them, well, it sure is convenient. It sure is convenient to not stand up for those rights and also to actively be harming them. It's very convenient. This is what these people are. This is what these people do. And like the very last thing is emotion. Okay. Emotion. We talk about, we talk about emotion sometimes. I, I want to leave this, leave us off on this. Okay. Fundamentally, we are all emotional. Okay. Because we're human beings and we have emotions. That's fine. Conservatives try to pretend that having emotions is somehow bad how being emotional 
is somehow cringe. How being emotional is somehow on the very opposite end of being rational. Because they think they rhyme, they think they must be opposite or something, or they must go together. Is this true? No. No. Absolutely not. I would actually say that the people who are the most emotional aren't the people who go up to talk about something that they really care about and start crying. I think the most emotional people are the ones who will never accept that they could possibly be wrong. If you ask somebody, what would it take for you to change your mind? And then they don't have like a real substantive uh, understanding for you. You are talking to a wildly emotional person. Here's what we know about psychology, okay? Not to turn this into a psychology class, but emotion is the most powerful force that we have. And conservatives use emotion every day, all day. And the, most, and the emotion they love the most is disgust and fear. Those are the two ones that they love. If they can promote disgust and fear in people, then they can get them to do basically whatever they want. Remember how I talked about when people are scared? that they bundled together? Well, now they've bundled together and now you can give them something to be scared and disgusted at and now they can basically do whatever you want. There's a reason why Tucker Carlson is going to like spew stochastic terrorism out of his multi-billion dollar high-rise um, New York uh, uh, TV broadcasting station while the, his grunts on the ground are busy getting thrown in jail and getting fucking killed because of, because of what he told them to do. Or hinted at them to do or pushed them to do by saying, oh, you know, what would happen if you didn't? But I would say, and what we know in psychology is that when you are, when you try to pretend to be super rational, that's typically when you're the most emotional. Emotion can be what's actually behind the wheel with rationality tied up in the trunk. Okay. It's how this, it's how a lot of this works. And we're not people who can always understand what that feels like. Emotion could be at the wheel for so long that we just don't know what rational, what having a ration back in the driver's seat actually feels like. And so there can be people who are just completely lost, right? And simply because you're not crying and simply because you're, you don't like show emotion does not mean that you're incredibly emotional. You very much can be. Have you ever, have you ever seen like a, like a, you trying to tell like a pickup artist that, uh, that they're misogynistic? You seen that before? You ever, you ever see that before? You ever, you ever try to talk to somebody who's really politically outspoken, uh, who's conservative, and then you tell them that they're just incorrect and you provide them with information about why they're wrong. And instead of like engaging with it, they just kind of get mad. It's curious, isn't it? It's not because they're thinking rationally. Back to what we talked about in the beginning. It's because they didn't come to that position with rationality. It was common sense. And then they rationalize why they believe it because they wouldn't believe it for a bad reason. There has to be a good reason. So here's all the reasons why. And they just walk backwards until they reach like the beginning of, of a thought and they just tie it all together. But it's held together with chewed gum, duct tape and old rope. OK, it makes literally no sense. This is what these people are. This is why they seem so fucking stupid. They're huffing copium and they're all running on E the entire time. That's what's that's what's happening. That's why they feel dumb. It's alternative facts. It's the common sense. It's the just asking questions. It's them being wildly emotional. And it's the anti-intellectualism that makes them seem the way they do. This is who they are. Now, not everybody is exactly like this. No, we're all different. But if you want to understand why they act like this in a group, that's why. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, it'll make Boo very sad. I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed. Join the frenzy. You won't regret it.